um, as, uh, as submitted. Um, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. We have the architect here. We have the traffic engineers who did the parking study. Uh, we have the full staff here should you have any questions. Go ahead, please. The, what was the original number of parking spaces as it was approved with the three buildings? Do you have your uh, chart? It's 100. Let me introduce uh, Glenn Cook of the traffic group that did the study on the parking. There's a, uh, looking at the, the staff report here, they have a table in here. And today there's 120 spaces that are required for the uses on the property. Yeah, okay, goodness. with the additional 19 units that we're proposing, um, that would require 35 additional spaces, which would bring us up to 155 spaces. Um, we could only get 145 spaces on the site, hence the 10 additional spaces that we need the waiver for. But what we had done was we had conducted the Urban Land Institute, ULI, has a shared parking process that you go through for mixed-use properties because the peak parking demand for, for instance, the residential does not match the peak parking demand time for the office. And because this is a residential project, the peak parking demand for the residential spaces, which is what we're proposing, aren't until later in the evening when the office spaces are no longer being utilized because people have gone home for the evening. So hence, what we have done by using that methodology and computing it, we have an excess number of parking spaces when you look at the hourly breakdown of need for each of the particular uses on the site. How, you know, with this being a multifamily property, how will you restrict the number of people who actually park there? I mean, I, when I think of today, 55 and older, that's not really old. You know, I mean, a lot of people dry, are still driving at that age. So I guess the only question I had was, how can you balance making sure there's appropriate parking for 7-Eleven and the mixed use? You, you know, the assumption is that there'll be less cars there. Correct. But we know, I mean, even in current multifamily properties that have been existing today, a lot of apartments are going to permits because extra people are parking there, extra people live in those buildings. And so... I guess I'm trying to wonder how we can balance that to make sure that everybody's going to be happy. Actually, there, you know, I mean, really, there's no way to guarantee when people can park there and when they can't park there. But the, the analysis that we went through goes through an hour by hour computation. And 11 o'clock in the morning, for instance, is when the demand for the office space is at 100%. Okay. The 7 Eleven demand is about 45% at that time of morning, and the residential is also about 45%. So there's a lot of fluff in there. I, I can't tell you that it's going to okay. be the need for 46 spaces as opposed to 45. There's just no way to control it. But there's an abundance, of, not an abundance, but there's excess parking when you go through that computation for each hour of the day. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Chairman? Uh, there was something about lingering around the 7-Eleven, and, and is that going to be addressed at all? I, I don't know what the issue is. There, there, um, there is a issue of the citizens' concern that uh, this area, which is designated for the park and for this marker, uh, this is the uh, first African-American baseball team. This was the diamond they played on uh, in the Oak Grove area. And uh, it was asked if that particular plaque and park could be moved to another uh, location on the property. Uh, that is an action that has to be taken by the city council. It's not our place to uh, okay. designate that. Some of the some citizens had expressed that a concern they'd like to do a garden in this area. Um, and they were concerned that if it's not Finn's property, they would get loitering off the 7-Eleven. Okay. Not in your <coughs> Okay. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. 
I have uh, another person on the sign-in sheet. It looks like it's Unda Brown. Good evening. I'm Linda Brown. I'm a resident at Park Place Laurel Condominium. Um, one of the concerns that, um, and, and you started addressing it from a parking standpoint, is the parking because of the fact we have a Chinese restaurant that is 20, well, it's um, 10 a.m. 10 p.m. 10 a.m. until 11 p.m. daily, every day of the week. We have a grocery store that's also seven days a week. Not the hours aren't quite as long. We have 7-Eleven, which is 24/7, um, and there are several businesses. One in particular that has some training that happens not only during the week but also on the weekends. And when they do have classes, they tend to have anywhere from 20 or more cars in the parking lot which really puts a lot of stress on it from a residential standpoint, where when you come home, there's just nowhere to park. Um, some people have had to park in the proposed area for the new apartment building. I don't know what the answer is to that. Um, you know, if we went to some type of permit, is that something that we would have to handle, or would the city get involved with that? That's private property. The city would not issue uh, parking permits on private property. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so that was one of the concerns. I also know that um, two of the, one of the board members and his wife attended the meeting last week and sent in a letter. Um, I don't have a copy of that. It was sent to the board. Does anyone have a copy of Joan? Jones letter? What board? What what board? To you. I don't to have Laurel Council? Yeah. Council. They did. They did. Pardon me? It's another body, but yeah. Looks We're like the commission. Planning oh, commission. Okay. We're not All right. council. Um, but I'm sure that'll be in the record at, at, for the council okay. at some point. Okay. Um, when the 7 Eleven was built, um, there was some work that was done for the drainage area on the 7th Street entrance to Laurel Park Place. And um, to date, that drainage, it was damaged, I guess, by some tractor trailers sometime last year. And that has still not been fixed. As a matter of fact, this morning with all the rain we had, the entrance and on the 7th Street side literally is flooded because the water goes nowhere. When the island was put in between um, 601 and the 7-Eleven, um, there was no way to drain water from the 601 side of that island, so that collects water. Um, what we would like to know is that, you know, with the new um, construction going up, and I understand that these are two totally different entities, but we would like to know that 7-Eleven would, would have to fix what was supposed to have been done when 7-Eleven was built last year. That still is a problem, and if we're going to have even more traffic, you know, I just don't want any more impact on the people who've already bought into Laurel Park Place condominium. You've done the right thing by bringing it to our attention at this particular point in time. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, and then the, the issue with the plaque was, as was mentioned, that we were concerned if a park was put to the right of 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven's customers would feel that that would be somewhere for them to, to rest and congregate and whatever. Um, we were thinking on the right-hand side of Building 601 to have the memorial plaque set up there that's an open space that is now fenced in. So it would be something to recognize and commemorate the fact that that was a ballpark for the Negro League so we can conclude that without having it be in an area next to 7-Eleven. And we were thinking about having the area, the land space to the right of 7-Eleven as a community garden for the residents and that would require to be fenced in. That was something that we were thinking about. Okay. Okay. I have a couple questions. Sure. So for staff, thank you. Um, the property that, that that you're mentioning for the community garden, is that private property or owned by the city? It's. So that's 
private it's property? Part of, it's part of Laurel Park Place condominium. Okay, so whether as that gets, was the other place. So whether that gets turned into a park or not, or a, a community garden, would be a cooperation between uh, whatever you had in your your site plan and 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 the owner of the property. Right. Okay. The, the the original location <clears throat> and the location we proposed were both part of the condominium okay. association. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else? I was just commenting that all, a lot of the issues that you're talking about can be dealt with with the ownership and the condominium association documents. Appreciate the comments, but yeah, we, yeah. we get to vote on revitalization. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, everybody. Is there any response to anything? Met with the HOA, uh, and all these issues are addressed. We are in the process of fixing 711 damaged the stormwater management pipe while they were doing their own construction. Mr. Collins has agreed to go fix it because by the time it goes through corporate 711, that's never going to happen. <laughs> it is an HOA, which means they can regulate parking on their property. It's their property, so if they want to do permits. And I would also add to the fact that I passed on to the fire marshal that there can't be 20 people in a 1,400 or 1,500 square foot building, something's got to give there, and that probably needs to be checked out. As it applies to the parking, uh, you know, I go back to the fact that, you know, if we continue to do smart growth urban areas, we have to get used to these parking waivers because they become an element of life. Um, uh, Legend Builders has the eight, um, excuse me, the, the, um, the uh, four buildings uh, just across from the 7-Eleven, of which Two of those buildings are eight apartments are age restricted and the other ones are non age restricted. We have 32 parking spaces on both and yet we only have 14 registered cars and we're 100 percent occupied. And um, again, you're you're falling as uh, our traffic engineer pointed out. We have a lot of people um, that in the case down where we are, which is right around the corner. We have people there. There's a couple age restricted that do not have a car. There's a lot of young couples with one car, and there's a lot of them that are using the bus system. And um, so I, I, you know, I think uh, while the 10 may sound like a large number, it's very small for a setting like this. And in addition to that, I think we can address this, um, this influx of large crowds. And if they need a training facility, certainly the city has plenty of um, space available, even right around the, com the, the community center at the police department, which could be more than made available to private businesses to use just like anybody else does and it's in is done all the time so I think all these can be answered in the in the course of making the right contacts and sitting down with those people um, but we do appreciate that and do the residents have direct access to you all well yes yes do they know that they certainly have direct access to Mr. Collins. They don't have direct access to me. <laughs> I will absolutely admit. I can see Mike they, smile. They do have a direct. They have a direct contact. Just with Mr. turn Collins. the meter on, Bob, and let them come at you. Right. <laughs> Miss Holland's my hero tonight because 55 ain't old, and I'm all with her. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, I don't have any questions for Mr. Uh, DePietro, but I do have a question for staff. I think we've all watched as these parking issues have come up yeah. and we've handled them kind of on a case-by-case -case basis which I don't think I want to stop doing personal opinion but I do think we need to start to set some boundaries for ourselves of how we address this you know we went through the one with the uh, the funeral home we went through you know we've been through multiple iterations right. I just think for the for the good of the staff and for the uh, development community that are doing exactly what we wanted to do with these revitalization zones we we ought to be able to set some expectations of what would be reasonable and what wouldn't be I think if you went back and looked at the last couple of years yeah, of waivers thing. right there would be there would be maybe some patterns pulling out but but I just it, that would be nice to have that highlighted to us at, at the appropriate time and say okay you guys dealt with uh, 15 parking waivers and here's how you found for them over the you know pick some span of time just so that we could stay consistent from a pattern or from a solution standpoint well each one of them is a, is a case by case yeah. but I, I think it I think I think Mr. DiPietro makes a point and we've said this amongst ourselves we've got to give on these especially on Main Street 
yeah. right, where we just don't have the parking. Yeah, right. um, you know, <laughs> the one on Route 1 there uh, for the funeral home, that was a little different because there was literally no place else to go, right? They were going to be parking in dangerous places, and I think we kind of held the line on that one. But I think it would be good to look back okay. at the appropriate time. Certainly nothing we have to do today. Okay. Wonderful comment. Very good. Without a hula skirt. I can bring it. <laughs> Anything else? No, sir. Are we, are we ready for a vote? I'd like to, oh. It's on your boat. <laughs> Comes out of your feet. <laughs> That's one of what our cut is. And no, I wouldn't even raise yeah, that question. No, no. <laughs> you decided. Mr. Mr. Chairman, oh no, yes. I'd like to make a uh, uh, motion to uh, recommend approval for revitalization overlay application number R02-01-212 amended overlay plan ordinance number 1767. 605 7th Street Park Place Project, um, and it doesn't have a resolution, I don't believe. No. Yes, oh, 12-15? 12 uh -huh. And 12 uh, a resolution number 12-15-PC. It's been motioned. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Kish. Ms. Green. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Kish? Yes. Mr. Walford? Yes. Mrs. Bettman? Yes. Chairman Williford? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And same for 1215 PC, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I included yeah, it. Did you include it? it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Oh, God. So uh, I think we're, we're done with the business. Yeah. I'm going to move to the other. We'll do, we'll do that. Just, just encouraging the dialogue residents you know who to get in touch with yes as often as you can squeaking wheel gets the oil you know that old expression can i just say one thing sure i really do have to commit because mike connor's an apartment building owner came to our board meeting to address any questions that we have so we do have an open dialogue going and i really think all of us that represent Royal Park Place Condo really do appreciate that. And in fact, he's the builder of where we work or live. You know, so um, it was, it's definitely there. We told him everything he knows. <laughs> the, the, the good thing about Mr. Collins is he lives here. We, we yeah. know where he lives. Can't get, can't so we'll just raise his taxes if we have to. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, the meeting will not conclude. Now we're going to if you want to leave, you're free to leave. What we're getting ready to do is in-house business relative to electing a chairman for the commission. Um, perspective. <laughs> perspective. Well, that's your prerogative. Uh, you all make this easy. I don't know why everybody resists. You have a good leader. I don't, right. I don't, I hear that, but there's no basis for it. In fact, <laughs> uh, as long as I'm able, I'm glad to, but uh, I, I you gotta, you, 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 in, in special forces, you always have cross training, backup. Somebody falls down, somebody else can pick up the slack. And there's nothing, there's nothing Difficult. There's a lot of common sense, but I also know that common sense is rare. No, I, I, I think uh, sitting in that seat uh, takes some perspective. You've been on this uh, committee for a long time. Uh, you do a great job. It's always a fun meeting, and if you're willing to serve, I think I, for one, would be mo more than willing to support you. You just don't want to do your hula dance. No, that's all. Okay. Man so uh, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, re-elect our fearless leader, uh, Donald E. Williford is our chairman. The third. The, no. <laughs> so I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? second. I'll second that. We have a second. Sarah, call the roll. 
Yes. <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Life. Yes. Mrs. Bettman. With pleasure, yes. Mr. Welford. Yes. Mr. Kish. Most definitely. Chairman Williford. Yes. <laughs> Put up the white smoke. <laughs> white smoke. <laughs> On the first ballot. Oh. Congratulations, sir. Oh, I don't do that. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. congratulations. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How about a this, thank you? If I start we, we coughing, it's because of all the smoke that's being blown around. It's, you just know the old guy has nothing to do. Ha, ha, ha. That's adjourn not true. Meeting? Are we going to let him adjourn? Yeah, let's adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Is there any other business? No. Meeting is a journey. We have some things to sign, Just right? Just one. Borrow your pen. The original ethics one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's insane. Did you ever look at that original ethics form that they had? I did. And I, Thanks I again, Bill. Out. Well, that's what right. we well, were saying the same. I just he told her the if I had to fill out who I own property with. Oh, this is blue. Where I own you know, property. The old one. Yeah. The, uh, no, that's it the, was, the, it, it, it's the new one they're trying oh, to Oh, no, I love yeah, the blue one. No. Yeah. They're, they're not if that was fire. more some people, than some, my SF-278 at work. I've not had a hug. 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 i have not had a hug i have not had a hug you That's, don't have to do it. I called. I did the same thing. And I don't have any money. I can imagine, no, imagine neither, if I was neither, this guy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Me too, but it was like I was trying to figure out, okay, then basically with mom and dad living, I would have to get all of their Europe. stuff the way that one was written. written because they're not it's not really it was like really bizarrely written. Yeah. I mean, that. Yeah. Wow. All right. You guys want to I actually no, we, for, I don't want to keep this, this one. I'll keep this one just for the because of the park lane. I figure it's coming back. Yes, this one. This is going to come back, right? Yes, because it's going to the city council, right? And then it, will it come no. back to us after city council or no? No, since it's an amendment. It's a, oh, okay. And the city council. Because it's already 